are here with Her Excellency Dr. Hanan al Khawari, the Minister of Public Health for the state of Qatar. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I want to ask you about a question that's been in the news. Um, have you seen any evidence to suggest that the source of coronavirus, COVID-19, was a lab leak? Um, there has been a thorough investigation done by the WHO, and uh, that investigation does not indicate that it is uh, a lab leak. So we will see. There's another phase of investigation. So we will see more as we proceed. <laughs> now, uh, Qatar purchased a uh, Pfizer vaccine, Moderna vaccine. Those were some of the first vaccines to roll out um, quite quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, why target those vaccines back in the fall when you kind of struck those deals? Yes. Well, from the onset of the uh, pandemic, it was very clear that for us to get out of the pandemic, we need to vaccinate our population and there needs to be a global drive to vaccinate. So His Highness was very clear in his direction. He asked us to make sure that we provide or procure the most effective and safe vaccine. So we did a thorough study of the vaccines that were available. Um, uh, at that time, they were still at clinical trials. And we found that uh, Pfizer and Moderna were both promising, as well as AstraZeneca. Um, and uh, we um, sort of bet on, on these, and we worked very closely with um, uh, the pharmaceutical uh, companies that produced these. And we were able to secure um, uh, uh, enough quantities to support our population and to drive um, global, uh, and to support the global drive on vaccination. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because those mRNA vaccines turned out to come out with the highest sort of effectiveness. So it seems like a lucky or a smart bet. Let me yes, it exactly. <laughs> it was a smart bet. And it's, a, it's a, also an indication that the new innovative technologies are really important and there needs to be a continuous drive to support um, innovation in the pharmaceutical and medical industries. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, right now, there are restrictions that are targeted um, to unvaccinated members of the population, mm -hmm. whereas vaccinated members can, can do a bit more. Mm -hmm. How long do you see that persisting? Um, well, as long as globally the, um, the level of vaccination has not reached the level where we can say that the virus has been suppressed, it will be important to protect the communities, whether it is by imposing restrictions or whether by imposing additional um, uh, uh, tests. And um, um, uh, testing is a very safe uh, way of opening businesses when you have areas that are unvaccinated. So with vaccination, that reduces the needs for, for a continuous testing. But with unvaccinated population, it is really important to continue um, uh, to test uh, at uh, such regular intervals. I guess, will you, will you end that when you reach herd immunity, perhaps? Yes. Okay. Well, we, we hope so, because um, uh, we have the evidence now that the um, vaccination does reduce significantly the spread of the, the, uh, the virus. However, it does not totally reduce the spread of the virus. So what it will look like after, in terms of testing, global testing policies, post-global herd immunity, is still something that is being worked on. Yeah, but but yeah, we're absolutely. very optimistic that, inshallah, with uh, um, uh, um, uh, most uh, countries reaching um, a, a sufficient level of vaccination, we will see less and less testing, less and less restrictions, and more opening up of um, countries and economies. Um, I want to ask you a slightly different question. Mm -hmm. um, you've had a very important role during this crisis, um, and you happen to be the only woman on the Qatar Council of Ministers. What initiatives are you getting behind? What are you pushing? Are you championing mm -hmm. right now? Um, to improve the, the uh, rights of women, the standing of women, in a country that is admittedly has a patriarchal system? Yes. Well, for starters, I must say that His Highness uh, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad and His Highness the Emir Father, um, Sheikh Hamad bin, Tamim have been, uh, Hamad bin Khalifa, have been the um, biggest supporters of women and women's um, um, uh, education, empowerment in Qatar. As you can see, um, uh, Qatar has one of the largest number of educated women. Um, there are more women graduating from universities than, than men. There are women working in very important sectors across the country. Um, and including yourself, including yes. Including myself, <laughs> indeed. Um, and Her Highness Sheikha Moza, Sheikh, Her, Her Excellency Sheikha um, Hind, um, uh, and a very strong, powerful women across uh, uh, the country. Um, and also, don't forget, as a health sector, um, the majority of the health workforce are women. 
their nurses, their doctors, their lab technician. So I feel in very great company um, but any, from anything, top to bottom. <laughs> fair. But anything specific you're pushing, like a, an agenda item that you want to see? Well, in, in terms of empowering um, women, um, the rights of children, um, the rights of people with special needs, um, uh, these are very important agendas that are discussed regularly uh, in the cabinet and, and, um, and uh, um, uh, uh, at the cabinet of ministers. And these are important ag agendas for me as well. Dr. Hanan al Kawari, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Dr. Hanan al Kawari, the Minister of Public Health in the state of Qatar.